The engine can be split up into four main areas. Compressor, combustor, the turbine, and the exhaust. The compressor has two jobs. It sucks and squeezes, drawing air in from outside, and also compressing the air. Some of the air is forced into the combustion chamber at very high pressures, so that when fuel is mixed with it and ignited, a rapid increase in heat energy is produced. The combustion chamber is where the bang happens. The burning mixture of air and fuel is sent rushing at high speed into the turbine. As this gas expands, part of the energy is used to power the turbines, which in turn drive the compressor. Finally, the gas is blown out through the exhaust nozzle. It has lost some of its energy through the turbine, but has enough left over to accelerate through the nozzle, providing a fast-moving propelling jet stream out of the back of the engine, and therefore, by reaction, creating an equal and opposite forward thrust. As the air is pushed through the compressor, the space available for it is reduced, and it gets literally packed in, so much so that compression ratios of up to 40 to 1 are possible. The compressor is driven by the turbine. One turbine can drive the whole compressor, but now there are often two or three turbines in an engine, each with a separate shaft that rotates a different section of the compressor. The fact that the sections can then rotate at different speeds means it is easier to maintain the correct overall flow of air through the engine, and the entire engine can be made shorter and stiffer. When the air reaches the combustion chamber, it's at a pressure approaching 600 psi, and it's traveling at more than half the speed of sound. Fuel is difficult to burn under these conditions, so a combustion chamber provides the correct environment, an area of more slowly moving and swirling air that is sprayed with fuel. This mixture will ignite, and the increase in heat energy is quite considerable. The burning gas can be as hot as 2,100 degrees centigrade, and at this sort of temperature, the metal the turbine blades are made of will melt. However, cooler air continues to be mixed with the burning gas to lower its temperature before entry into the turbine. And more cool air that had not been taken through the combustion chamber, but diverted for cooling purposes, brings the operating temperature of the turbine blade down to a more manageable 1,000 degrees or so. Often, as well as driving the compressor, the turbine will also provide ancillary power to even drive a propeller. It is vital that turbines are perfectly designed and manufactured. Just this one stage, the high-pressure turbine can generate up to 70,000 horsepower, at which point the blades will be spinning at 1,500 feet per second. That's over 1,000 miles per hour. So everything must be done to ensure that the passage of gas through the turbines is as smooth as possible. Similar care is taken as the gas leaves the engine through the propelling nozzle. It is these exhaust gases that provide the thrust to power the engine, so essential that they are propelled from the engine at exactly the right speed required by the aircraft. A development of the turbojet is the turboprop. This has an extra turbine which through a gearbox, drives a propeller. Aircraft powered by a turboprop are not as fast as those powered by a turbojet, but nevertheless, the turboprop remains a very efficient and economical engine. If the propeller is removed from a turboprop, then the resulting engine is called a turboshaft. The shaft is coupled to a gearbox, and through this it can drive a helicopter rotor.